Marketing Manager here at Autodesk. The Revit Product Management Team is here dialing in to speak to you about what's new for subscribers in the latest release of Revit. And we love to know a bit about who's listening, so we're going to start out with a couple polling questions. Um, going to pull that up. First of all, um, we'd love to know if you subscribe to Revit. Um, the options are, you know, desktop subscription, which is um, when you subscribe by the the term. We have have maintenance subscription, our new AEC collection, or if you um, are not yet on subscription. Great. All right. Thank you. And then we're um, also really great to know, you know, which release of, of Revit software you're running right now. Um, the, the most current release is 2017, then there's also you know, 2016, 2015, and uh, perhaps some of you are using an earlier version. Great, looks like a lot of folks are on 2017. All right, and then finally, um, we launched, oops, You know what we the question is, have you heard of the Revit Ideas page? And I think the answer um has a desktop subscription that's not relevant, but really it's a yes or no. The Revit Ideas page is a, a new utility or place that launched a couple months ago where you can uh, pop in and post your ideas publicly um, for communication directly with product management. I just wanted to know who's familiar with it. All right. Well we'll have a little bit more about that um further in. All right. Great. Thanks so much. Um, so, so for those of you who've been using Revit for a while, you may recall that in the past we've called updates um, R2. We've switched to a new nomenclature that should be easier to follow. So this update is called Point One. The Point One update was made available to all active subscribers to Revit. That includes suites the AEC collection earlier this week on October 12th. Uh, subscribers can access the update in their Autodesk accounts page. In this um, presentation, we're going to hear from Revit product managers talking about features for architecture, features that are multidisciplinary and you know, rel relevant to everyone, features for structural engineering, and features for MEP design and fabrication. Um, but we also look at the release in terms of, of themes, and the product management team um, puts these together. And really, these are the three themes that drive what's in Revit 2017.1. So create is really all about modeling, making it easier to create and import data into a project, also by providing more complete modeling capabilities for duct and pipe, and by, by providing more out-of-the-box, ready-to-use content. The theme around automate is around boosting your productivity, literally, by automating tasks kind of relieving you of some of those um, tedious tedious aspects. And then strengthen is about Revit delivering better feedback and access points as well as um, taking advantage of modern technologies. So with that intro, we're going to hand it over to Harlan Brum, um, product manager for Revit. Harlan? Hi, Sylvia. Appreciate that. Hopefully, hopefully everybody can hear me okay. Like Sylvia said, my name is Harlan Brum. I'm the product manager for Revit for architecture and construction. And I'll go through and cover our features that we intend for architects. And then Sasha Crowdy will step in and talk about uh, the multidiscipline features. So we can do the next slide. So the first thing I'll talk a little bit about is um, the ability to model in perspective. So with 2017.1, we've introduced functionality that basically allows you to do any modeling command in a perspective view. Um, the idea here is you can reduce view switching. So if you're already in perspective and you need to modify something or edit or move something, you can easily do that. But you can also add elements. Um, pretty much every command works. Um, you're not allowed to an an annotate in a 3D in a perspective view right now, but um, you'll have the ability to basically do any other modifications that you need within that view. So next slide. 
So to go along with that, we've also made an enhancement to what we call sketch on level. Um, in previous versions of Revit, if you had copied or changed the reference level of a sketch based element and you went to edit the sketch, like a roof, um, you would end up editing the sketch on the original level of the object. So if it was originally put on level one, but you had to move it to level 10, um, the sketch lines would appear on level one. So we've enhanced this so that now the sketch lines appear on the correct level. So if you were doing that modification, they'd appear on level 10. Um, this goes hand in hand with being able to model in perspective and the idea that you can be more immersive and actually modifying things at the right location. All right, next slide. Oh, one too far, a couple too far. Go back. <laughs> oh. Uh, there we go. Okay. <laughs> uh, import 3D shapes. Um, so we've, we're introducing new support for importing Rhino files directly from Rhino. So 3DM files can now be imported into the Revit model directly. And as well, we enhance the ability to import SAT files. Um, this really lets you uh, collaborate with people using other pieces of software that may produce geometry and need, need, need to be able to bring that geometry directly into Revit. The other powerful piece of this is you can actually assign a category to this geometry. So you can say that it's a wall or it's whatever it actually needs to be. And this lets you then filter um, or schedule that information as well. And um, you know, ideally you're going to get much higher quality geometry than we did before. So we've enhanced the actual uh, import of that geometry. Um, and you can actually tag and dimension it as well as if it's you know, that category of object. Uh, so next slide. So we've also made a couple of little small enhancements. Um, this one in particular is a kind of long-standing annoyance um, where if you were editing a railing, you needed to, uh, and you needed to edit the top rail or the handrail, you had to actually leave the railing uh, type dialog and navigate separately to try to find where that top rail or handrail was located. So now with a simple one click button, you can get access to the handrail or, or top rail properties and make those changes um, in a seamless workflow. And so really we wanted you to have to reduce steps here and just make it a lot easier to actually edit and modify our railing right within it and not have to jump around. So next slide. Another small thing is we know stairs are, can be kind of complex to understand what all the parameters do and what they mean. So we've added a number of tooltips to those parameters within the, the properties palette. Um, and it adds information and images so that you can better understand and model the stair and you know, hopefully less training will be needed to actually understand how a stair can get put together and modified. So next slide. And the last thing I'll, I'll talk about is LEDs. Um, so in Revit 2017, we introduced the ability to use LED light fixtures, um, but we didn't have any samples available for you. And so with 2017.1, we're providing LED sample light fixtures um, with their corresponding IES files. So as well, um, we've actually enabled in 2017 the ability to use LED IES files as well, and now we actually include those as part of the content that you'll get. This will need to be downloaded separately, actually, from the actual install. Um, it's not included if you just install the patch, so there will be a site available on our website where you can download these families um, if you need them. Okay, I'm going to hand things over then to Sasha, I think. Next slide. So I'm Sasha Crotty, so I'll be talking to you guys about a few multidisciplinary uh, enhancements that we've done for 2017.1. Uh, the first and totally fantastic uh, one is uh, Dynamo Player. And Dynamo Player really allows uh, the use of Dynamo scripts for people who are familiar with Dynamo. So the idea is that we can really make the power of scripting available to everyone. So even if you're not comfortable writing a script, you can certainly obtain one from somewhere else and use it on your model. And you can do it really easily because it creates a one-click interface uh, for just running the script. So you uh, press the play button and uh, the uh, Dynamo player actually provides feedback to you when that script is done playing. Um, one of the things that uh, we don't, uh, it does not currently accommodate is the ability to do inputs, um, but that is something we will hopefully uh, be able to enhance on in the future. 
Um, so really powerful tool and I hope you guys uh, are able to use it. Um, the next uh, enhancement is an updated Dynamo and essentially the biggest enhancement for the new version of Dynamo, which is Dynamo uh, 1.2, um, is the addition of a, a series of new nodes that you can actually add, uh, use to do a lot more documentation um, as well as placement of objects. So uh, there's a much more uh, access to drafting elements. Uh, there's the ability uh, to add tags and text, um, work, you know, work with rooms, um, and then play face based families. And then the other thing that is enhanced is the ability to work with lists. Um, so that should be a lot easier. It'll allow you to re uh, remove list maps. Um, and then get a list of levels um, in a much more efficient way. So the idea here is we're making Dynamo much more, uh, much easier to use uh, and providing more and more content for you to be able to do things out of the box. Next slide, please. Uh, so one enhancement, uh, which is primarily targeted at uh, file-based uh, work shared models, um, is the corruption uh, data loss prevention. So the idea here is that if in the unlikely event that your uh, model gets corrupted, um, we want to let you know as soon as possible. Uh, that way you don't keep working with a corrupted model and you're not losing any work. So um, you'll actually be alerted um, during sync um, that there's something wrong in your model. And usually if something happens, there's a network problem or a disk space problem uh, that causes some sort of corruption. Uh, we'll let you know and there's actually instructions for how to repair your model so you can actually take uh, a, a recent local that is not corrupted and be able to replace uh, the central model and fix it that way. Um, this, there's also a notification about uh, corruption happening um, during file save in non-work share models. There you just get a warning saying, by the way, this, is, uh, this model is corrupt, so you probably need to go back to your most recently saved model. Next slide, please. And uh, one other enhancement is uh, for collaboration for Revit. And the idea is to uh, give you information about what's happening. You know, why is this process, ta process taking so long? How long is it going to take? And when is it done? Um, so we've a added a new dialog um, to let you know what's happening in the background, um, what Revit is doing, and you can see the progress. So you can understand when your sync is going to be done. Um, so you're never surprised of, you know, how long it's going to take you. So this is really an informational uh, message to help you understand what Revit is doing um, and kind of the impact of your work. Next slide, please. And uh, the last one for me that I'm going to cover is Insight360 integration. And um, Insight360 is our energy uh, modeling or sorry, energy analysis tool uh, for actually providing better feedback into design the design process. Uh, in terms of designing your building and understanding how it's going to perform uh, in the real world. Uh, so the idea here is we actually make the tools more available in the ribbon for you so you can actually directly use it. Um, this is something that's available as part of your subscription. Um, so this is a great subscription benefit to actually make it, uh, allow you to design better buildings because you have access to the tools. So what we've done is we've put all those tools directly in the ribbon. You don't have to install any kind of separate add-on or anything like that. So this is directly available to you as long as you So I hope you guys take advantage of it because we all want to live in more energy efficient buildings. All right, next slide, please. Oh, I guess there's more. Sorry. <laughs> uh, so actually, uh, re another really fantastic feature. You can tell I'm getting really excited here. Um, uh, it's like it's almost a surprise. It's high resolution monitor support. Uh, so high resolution monitors, this is something that people have been requesting for a long time. We realize you guys have great hardware, you have great monitors, uh, you, may, you may be running uh, Revit on a Mac, uh, you may just have a very large screen on your desk, um, all these things, uh, and we realize that Revit is pretty much impossible to use um, because all the controls are teeny tiny on screen, um, you know, text was illegible, things didn't fit. Um, we've gone ahead and fixed that, so this is a great enhancement if you have a 4K monitor because you can actually truly start using uh, truly start using your technology that's available to you. Next slide. With that, I'm going to switch over to uh, Dan. To Dan. Hello, everyone. I'm uh, Dan Peticillo, and I present to you the structural features. So let's go to the next slide, please. Okay, so for this update of Revit 2017, all structural features are still related. And I'm going to start with the split columns and framing elements command. Now, making Revit ready for LOD 400 
structural steel models is one of the, the key areas for us and reusing the design model without losing information is required to place a steel connection for fabrication information and to provide uh, everyone disability the split behavior for columns and framing elements has been improved in required areas parameters like spot elevation uh, coordinates object orientation uh, and offsets are kept now for the split elements um, furthermore, um, relations coming from join or cope will stick to the object similar to openings and assembly information. And also in documents, the improvements are visible where the tags will stick to the desired place. Uh, this is also important uh, for the bill of materials so that fabricators and others can have access to, to the right quantities uh, from the Revit model from the from the early design phases. Uh, next slide, please. Oh, so yeah, we could go to the to the next. Okay, so um, the AISC connection code check uh, in. Uh, Revit 2017, we released steel connections and now there's an update for this. Uh, code check for the American code has been added to it and the American Institute of Steel Construction updated their manual last year uh, with version 14 uh, and included some new definitions for hot rolled uh, steel shapes and connection code check. Uh, while the 2017 version of Revit was already delivered with the updated content for uh, for hot rolled steel, the 2017.1 uh, now comes uh, also with steel connections uh, code check according to this uh, red book. Uh, and one area with changes uh, has been the bolt verification. Uh, the published uh, strength for uh, for uh, for bolts has been increased. And this change is now also included in the steel connections for Revit. Um, also, the code references were added to each connection so that it is easier for the engineer to understand the calculation and the results in the documentation. So now 21 connections can be checked according to the latest AIC. We can go to the next slide. Uh, Chinese and Japanese content uh, to increase adoption for our Autodesk solutions on the Chinese and Japanese market in the structural steel detailing and fabrication. Um, uh, Revit delivers with the 2017.1 uh, version the 20 most common used sections according to the latest Chinese and Japanese standards, like the eye shapes, um, angles, pipes, and channels. The added families here um, include also analytical section information and synchronize seamless into the Autodesk's uh, structural steel detailing. Um, into the, into the Autodesk yeah, structural steel detailing solutions advanced with. with an, uh, let me just remind you that uh, we have already delivered um, the, the right uh, content containing all the geometrical and analytical properties uh, for catalog-based uh, hot rolls profiles in other countries uh, like the USA, Canada, New Zealand and Australia, uh, France, uh, Germany, Poland, I think even UK and India. And this means that we have a pretty good set of content in Revit, enabling running analysis directly from Revit um, and also uh, enabling driving detailing uh, from Revit. Uh, so those properties uh, now are taggable and can be seen in schedules. Um, and another reminder that I would like to make is that Two years ago, when we completed the structural material libraries assets for some countries, uh, plus that we had the, the rebar content, um, meant that we have now an almost complete 
content for structures. So, so this led to the discontinuation of the content generator in version 2017. This is, but this is to encourage uh, everyone to start using the right content because there are many benefits coming from this, like integration with advanced steel, more native functionalities, uh, and uh, documentation and scheduling uh, with the right properties. So this was all uh, for this update on the structural uh, side. Thank you. Next slide. All right. Please. Yeah, this is Martin Schmid. I am the product line manager for Revit MEP for design as well as fabrication. And I will be talking with you primarily about improvements that we're making ongoing with the fabrication modeling elements within the Revit environment. So one of the very commonly requested functionalities with regard to the fabrication elements is the ability to make modifications to the sizes of connected fabrication element runs. Uh, so you'll find that in the update release, the ability to select multiple components and resize those and, and maintain their connectivity and, and things will adjust and expand accordingly. Um, additionally, another requested functionality was with regard to being able to make copies of elements or offset them and then use the change service capabilities. Uh, one thing to know with that is that you need to change it to the same service template and specification. So right at this point, we still don't have the ability to switch, say, from a flange system to a group system. But as long as it's using the same components, you can change that service property on those elements. Next slide, please. Uh, next major improvement here is with regard to being able to exclude elements from the autofill tool. So for example, if you're running sheet metal ductwork and you want to uh, model out utilizing a mitered bend as opposed to a radius bend, you can have control within that service to make that modification. Um, these changes are user specific within the session, um, so you're not running in conflict with other users. You can kind of have your preferences as you're modeling and, and not have that conflict with, uh, with what other users are doing potentially within the same service or within other services within that session. Uh, additionally, um, we're starting to move in a lot more of the data that you need to modify with regard to the fabrication elements. Um, and instead of burying these within um, different dialogues and tabs within dialogues and so forth, we're exposing those directly within the canvas. So the example here is with regard to the dampers on the um, on ductwork components. So you select the ductwork component, you can add the damper, and then you also have drop lists of the dampers that are available from your configuration to assign those to those elements. So instead of, again, drilling into various dialogues, it's just right there in Canvas on screen. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. There we go. Thank you. Um, the next is a... Um, and enhancements with regard to more coherence and consistency with the rest of the platform. So it's similar to how Steel had the ability now to um, improvements around splitting the Steel elements, we also have the ability now to split the fabrication elements. So you could split out sections of, of piping or ductwork, move it around, offset it, and so forth, and then fill in between. So if you're trying to coordinate around beams or other components, um, it's much easier to do that now. And then similar to the damper controls, we also now have the ability to modify the hangers within the canvas. So if you need to change the rod size from one size to another, um, you do have to make a, set up your ancillary kit. So there's also an enhancement within the um, CAD CAM and S products to be able to make modifications and define ancillary kits that would control rod size and so forth. And once you've done that, updated that into the Revit model, you can now swap out those ancillary kits. And that enables consistency between the data that's happening within Revit with regard to rod size and then the estimating data that would come out in rod reports and linear nest reports and those sorts of things um, once you go downstream uh, with that data. Next slide, please. We've also included the AWW and pump content that we've actually had this content for quite a while. It was always on the subscription center um, and now we've integrated this as part of the standard install and um, it's also available for download if you're doing the upgrade process as opposed to a full 2017.1 install. And next slide, please. And then last but not least is the integration of the space naming tool. Um, so this is a utility that we've had, again, for quite a while. 
Um, and it's always been one of those where every release, you have to go find it and download it and install it. Um, it's now part of the 2017 point release and will be that way moving forward. So um, makes you makes it easier for you to get up and running without having to go collect all the additional add-ons that um, we've been shipping over the years. And I think it's back to Sylvia. Great, thank you. So uh, before we jump to, I saw there were some questions coming through. Before we jump to those, I just wanted to um, point out a few great ways to stay in touch. Um, first is the Revit Ideas page. It's part of the Autodesk community. Um, and that's a screenshot there. You can see um, how it, what it looks like. It's, it's a, the best way to share ideas for, for future product features or really your feedback comments, things that you've always thought, you know, wow, this would be a great idea. Um, the product team, the Revit team, the folks who are on the, this call, um, this is this is the tool they use um, to evaluate all the suggestions from users, and um, it's absolutely the place to go. Um, we also have a, a blog that the product managers contribute to. It's called insidethefactory.typepad.com. Um, another great place for information. And Autodesk Revit is active in social media. Uh, both Facebook and Twitter are great um, places to uh, go and or have come into your feed for the latest and greatest around um, Revit. And then I'm going to open up some of these questions and see if we can um, run through a few of these here. Um, boom, boom, boom. There was a question around, um, and I'm going to, I don't know if you guys can see the panel as well, but I'll, I'll pull out a few if you'd like to jump in, feel, please feel free, feel free rather. Um, there's a question around um, editing in perspective view um, and interest in um, navigating in perspective view as well versus the f fixed camera approach. Um, any um, there is the ability right now to, to do some navigation. Um, we have uh, what's called the steering wheel that's available to walk. Um, probably, you know, if you're not aware of that, that's something to check out with regard to moving around it. Uh, a perspective editing view. That will allow you to walk and um, like change and orbit the view so that you can better manipulate um, the camera. Okay. On a more of a um, operate like tactical topic, um, seventeen one is seventeen point one a complete new install? Is it a you know a matter where it's advised to uninstall and just reinstall, or is it a patch? Um, and then um, also, I'll take that one again, Sylvia. Great. <laughs> um, so 2017.1 is available as a patch. Um, you can download, you'll get it from the Autodesk desktop app, um, or you'll be able to download that patch from accounts.autodesk.com. Um, we are also will be putting out a full installer. So if you haven't installed 2017.1 yet, and you just want to start with that, you'll be able to do that shortly. Um, and we'll make that available through Autodesk accounts for you to go get. So you don't have to uninstall and reinstall. Um, also, I thought I saw a question that was kind of similar to this in the list, which I'll answer, which is kind of about compatibility. If you had, if you have 2017 and 2017.1 on some machines, is that okay? Absolutely. Um, they are designed to work together. Well, they are designed to work. Um, if you are just have some people on 2017 and others on 2017.1, they are compatible with each other, so there's no concerns about that. Uh, although your users might really want all 2017.1, so but why not? <laughs> all right, um, and the link to down LED families. Um, we can provide that. Um, I don't have it right now, but right. we can definitely provide and, you know, it to the audience. Right, and that's the kind of thing that um, it'll be, I think, in addition to, you know, official ways of getting it, that we'll definitely get out on the social media feeds um, to make sure people are aware of where it is, but that'll be posted. Um, these are all great questions. I was also wondering, um, is the Sync Progress um, dialog, is that available for on Revit server models, or is that exclusive to collaboration for Revit? Uh, that is exclusive to collaboration for Revit for the time being. Okay. Let's see. And yes, the recording will be sent out. Um, okay, the LED. All 
All right, here's a, a good question around Dynamo Playlist, um, probably for Sasha. How does it handle packages that you add from others? Will it notify users without the package to download it to run the script? Um, I believe that it will post an error if you do not have the appropriate packages. So you'll have to open Dynamo on uh, uh, access the package manager and download the appropriate packages. Yeah, it is. Um, so if a script fails to run because it runs into a node that it can't process, you'll receive a message that asks you to open up the script and correct the error. It is possible with Dynamo to roll out Dynamo with all with a standard set of packages, um, and that's available with instructions on dynamobip.org um, where you can actually, you know, automatically have installed the packages that you need for your for your um, users to be able to get access to those scripts. One thing we should mention too about the player, um, just for everyone to kind of know, the player is designed to um, just run a script flat out. Um, so if there are inputs required, those will, you'll need to open the the script itself from the player in order to select those inputs and before the script will run. And then related, there was a, a question, can I deploy, uh, this was what you just said, the, the Dynamo playlist default folder, where is that stored? Uh, sorry, what was the question? It was where the, um, can, I, can I deploy the Dynamo playlist default folder? Where is that stored? Um, I believe it is possible. I don't know the exact file location, so that's something we'd have to take off of line. Yeah, and we can, we can again find that. We can have an article posted yep. that explains how to do that. And I'm pretty sure that, it, yes, it is possible to change that folder location if you want to point it somewhere else. Great. So a lot of questions about what may be coming next, um, and that's, you know, something to stay tuned to the idea station. But I had one more that looked, um, you know, diving a little bit deeper into the ability to import 3D shapes, you know, Rhino SAT directly. Can the faces on this geometry be selected to apply Revit elements such as walls, et cetera, to the faces? The answer is yes. All right. So if you bring in a Rhino or SAT file, you can select faces and apply walls to those things using the wall by face or roof by face tools or uh, those. They used to, we used to call them the building maker tools. So any of those tools will work on those shape on those imported pieces of geometry. Yep. So um, one other question that I see on here that I think is definitely worth answering is uh, the question was: Are there any API changes in 2017.1? Um, so yes, absolutely. There are API changes. Uh, for the most part, they're associated with any new functionality that we have added. Uh, however, there is one really significant change um, that people, I think, will be really excited about. Um, we've lift, lifted the restriction on using the API in perspective views, um, so API tools will now work in perspective. I'll, I'll also add to that that the hangar elements have more API data behind them to enable third parties and so forth to develop tools that will um, can, can do different types of analysis and, and hangar automation. All right. Um, sorry, one more thing I forgot to mention on the API. Um, uh, we are, uh, the updated SDK will be posted shortly uh, to the ADN website, um, so you'll be able to access all the information of what's new um, through that. Okay, great. And that's the ADN website? Yes. Okay, great. So that'll cover a couple things here. Um, I think, um, actually one more that looks like um, it, it could be, um, good to explore a little bit is where can I get more info on the um, corruption data loss tool and what it looks for? I recommend taking a look at the help. Um, so the, and the uh, that, that's probably the best area. Um, what it does look for is look works for st standard types of corruption. Um, typically, the the problem is that they're only detected on file open. So you could actually potentially work on a file for a long time before they're actually detected. So these are things that are de uh, detected. Otherwise, um, we just have moved the detection point much earlier um, so that you don't lose work um, working in a corrupted file. Okay, good. 
Good. So any other um, final comments or thoughts from the product team uh, around Revit 2017.1? Not really. We hope uh, <laughs> well, we can just say this. We hope everybody installs it, uses it, and likes it, and keeps giving us feedback. You know, definitely go to the Revit Ideas page if you have additional things that you'd like to see and vote on those items. We're actively looking at those items and um, figuring out how they fit into what we're going to do. Um, so, you know, please keep the feedback coming, and we're here to, to listen to you and you know, be, you know, Facebook and Twitter. Um, we're on as well, so we'll take all your feedback, and we hope to hear more from you guys. All right. Thanks very much. Thank you, everybody, for um, dialing in today, and uh, have a great weekend. Thanks so much. This is the end of the webinar.